this is proportion 7-1, so proportions is fairly easy. We've been doing this for a while, and we kind of, we use this more often than not. So the aspect ratio of a TV is proportional to the screen's width to the height. So for example, the ratio is 16 to 9, so this reads 2. Now the side lengths of similar triangles are proportional to one another. Now right triangles shown have congruent, so these triangles, oh you can only see one, these triangles uh, are congruent on the angles, so they're all 60, 30, 90. But they do have different side lengths. Like if you look at the little baby triangle right here, you have the base is 2 square root of 3 to 2 for the height. 4 square root of 3, 4 for the height. So they are proportional. Now a proportion is two ratios that are set equal to one another. It can be written in two different ways um, by setting two rational numbers equal to one another. Like A to B equals C to D. Or A over B equals C over D. They mean the same thing. Now some vocab here. Means, so are the two inner numbers. For example, this one and this one. I'm going to highlight for you. This one and this one, the two inner numbers. Now the extremes are the two outer numbers. this one and that one. Um, and why is it important to include units? It gives meaning and ensures accuracy. So in chemistry right now you're doing stoichiometry and I know you have to use the units and everything to make sure that you ended up with the right answer and the right unit. So there you go. Cross products is an algebraic way to solve a proportion. Most of you had done this already and you probably heard this being called cross multiplication. Everybody knows how to cross multiply. Proportions always have an equal sign and they're performed when two fractions fractions appearing opposite sides. Now you can write this four different ways and they're all correct. I'm going to give you some examples and um, it's going to be fun. I mean not fun but it's not going to be hard. And this is an example. So A over B equals C over D. So that means A times D equals C times D be right there. As long as the denominators are not zero. There you go. Um, scale factor. So scale factor is the number that scales or multiplies to get the other number. So here we have two rectangles, rectangle A and rectangle B. We're going to set up a proportion. Rectangle A, we have length of 5 and width of 3. And rectangle B, we have length 15, width 9. All right, so just one example for you to find the scale factor. So the scale factor. A to B 
is going to be 15 divided by 5 is 3. So remember that by definition is the number that multiplies to get the other number. So the scale factor a to b, you're going to get 5 times the scale factor 3 to get b. That's why I divided that. I'm going to say that one more time. Scale factor is the number that you multiply to get the other one. So you're going to get the number from a, 5, times 3 to get b. Now the scale factor b to a, we're going to do it the other way around. So 5 divided by 15, you get 1 third. So again, you're going to get b, so 15, times 1 third to get a, 5. Again, 15, scale factor of 1 third to get a. All right, it's not bad. Extended ratios, an algebraic way to express ratios of three or more variables. Values, I mean. Um, can be expressed as multiples of ratios. So A, 2B, 2C, 2D. We're going to work some examples of over that, the extended ratios. So to write a several separate ratios, identify what is represented by each number. And then you write the ratios that compare only two of the quantities. So you're only doing two at a time. You're not doing anything different. Even though the next example here, we have the red, the green, and the purple grapes. So the first number you're gonna match with the first description. So the four represents the number of red grapes. The five represents the number of green grapes. And then three represents the number of purple grapes. So for you to write the ratio of red to green, we already knew that red was four and green was five. So red to green, right there. Green to purple, green was five, purple was three. Red was four, purple was three. Remember that it's the order matters a lot. If you get mixed up, go back and label that like I did here on our little example. So extend a ratio used to find angles or side lengths of a triangle. We've done problems like these in the past and you guys aced it, so we're gonna see this again, but now we didn't name it like that back in the day, we just flat out solved it. So if uh, the angles of the triangle are two to three to four, so here's my pretty picture. So two X, three X, four X, these are the ratios. And we all know if I add up all three angles from the triangle, they must add up to 180. So I know 2x plus 3x plus 4x, it must add up to 180. So combine like terms, so 4 and 3 and 2 is 9x, 180 divided by 9, you get that x is 20. Now. Since we're talking about the angles here, I need to find each one of those angles. So the 2x angle, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 20 for x right there. So 2 plug in 20, I get that one of the angles is 40. The 3x angle, I have 3 plug 20 in for x. The other angle is 60. And then my third angle is the 4x angle. And that'll be, again, I'm plugging in 24x. So plug that in, multiply, we get 80. So here are my three angles, 40, 60, 80. This one is the 40 degrees, this one is 60 degrees, and this one is 80 degrees. 
sweet. We've done this in the past. This is a flashback. Now we have name to it. And um, we're going to come up with some examples shortly.